The structure that's behind me is a new structure. It's an engineered log jam that's been put in place to help create an environmentally friendly bank protection mechanism that captures energy, that creates habitat, and is a much more friendly way of managing risk along the river. And the aim now is to live with the river and create a system that support both the, the nature of how the river behaves and the quality of life up here with less risk and less hazard. The side channel reconnection and large log jams change the flow in two ways. One, they split the flow so a portion of the river's energy goes back onto the floodplain where it gets distributed and dispersed instead of concentrating further downstream. The other thing that happens is that the structures themselves, the log jams, have these rough surfaces of rough cut logs and the, the end root wads of trees and that creates turbulence deliberately that slows down the, the river and creates uh, forces that, that distribute the energy right here at the mouth of the river instead of further down where the houses are. Downstream from here, there are over 500 houses in a housing development called Timberline Rim that have been vulnerable to previous flooding events and previous channel migration and erosion. By absorbing some of the river's energy upstream, we're reducing that risk and letting the river do its natural function, spreading across the floodplain, creating habitat, spreading out, instead of focusing all that energy where the houses are. This project is the first in a series of opportunities we identified in a, about a 10 mile section of the Upper Sandy, where you had both an opportunity to improve habitat and reconnect the river to its natural function, as well as to reduce the risk to homes and residents and infrastructure at the same time. So this is the confluence of the Sandy and the Salmon Rivers. Uh, in the community, it's known as Brightwood Beach, but it's a place where all of the things that the Sandy represents come together. At the same time, this is a dynamic place for channel migration because these two rivers coming together here create all sorts of turbulence and dynamics. So we have this choice to say, well, do we want to let the river naturally erode and migrate back into places where it wants to go because of its energetic force? Or do we want to help kind of guide that force into places where it won't do as much damage, perhaps? Those are the sorts of things where when we do our restoration work properly and we look at the dynamics of the river, we can enhance habitat and reduce the risk to infrastructure at the same time.